Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna podcast coming to you on this uh, Sunday morning. I'm recording this. Uh, It's not a live edition of the show. Uh, As you may well be able to tell if you're watching us, I am in an airport uh, waiting for my flight to Paris uh, because I'm working uh, over in the French capital today um, on the CAF World Feed. Uh, commentating on a couple of uh, club competition games for the African Football Federation. So really looking forward to that. Although the 3.30 a.m. wake-up call this morning didn't go down well, I have to say. Um, But yeah, anyway, look, I'm not sure what the Wi-Fi situation is going to be where I am. Um, I know that I'm going to be sort of knocking around um, just sort of different cafes and stuff in the morning uh, in Paris until it is time for me to get to work. So I felt it was probably best to pre-record this episode. Um, don't worry, get involved in the live chat. I'll go back and have a look at it afterwards. But yeah, what a win last night, eh? What a win. Um, people will say that Arsenal are overreacting, that the celebrations were over the top, that you know it's Brentford, a side that if you want to be winning the Premier League title, you simply have to beat. But my response to that would be, It's not about the fact that we beat Brentford. It's the context of the whole thing, I think, that left Arsenal fans buzzing last night. Um, Manchester City and Liverpool played out a draw earlier on in the day. And how often is it going to be that those two both drop points? And therefore, there was a pressure on Arsenal to take advantage, to capitalise on that. It didn't look like it was going to happen at one point. It looked like it was going to um, peter out into a disappointing draw. And up steps the hero that we've all been waiting for all season. You know, people talked about Kai Havertz's goal at Bournemouth as, you know, maybe a turning point. But very quickly, when his performances never really took off after that, people kept saying, well, it was a pity penalty. That's all he's managed this season. But to come off the bench the way he did, have the impact he did and win the game for Arsenal, I think will be a massive boost for him, but it's a massive boost for us as well. If I could have hand-picked one player to pop up, and, um, and get us through that difficult moment, I'd have picked him because I think he needs it. I think he deserves it because I think regardless of what people have said about his performances so far, he's always worked hard. He's always um, been unselfish in terms of playing in roles that maybe don't suit him. Maybe, um, you know, he wasn't expecting to play when he arrived at the football club. Um, you know, we don't know what that communication between him and Mikel Arteta looked like in terms of what he was told. But, you know, one week he's playing... Uh, on the right side of a midfield three. One week he's playing on the left side of a midfield three. The next week he's on the bench. The next time around he's being brought on as an auxiliary centre forward. Like you, you have to say at the very least, regardless of your opinion and your thoughts on Kai Havertz, he's been unselfish, he's kept his head down, he's been plodding away. And I think you could tell by Mikel Arteta's reaction, the way he sort of made sure that he ushered him over to the away fans in the end. It was a big moment for Arteta as well because he will feel under pressure with regards to this signing because it was one that he was very much pushing it was one that he was very much behind um you know he would have been urging the club to go out and pay the 65 million pounds that Chelsea wanted for the player in the end the club did but up until now we haven't really seen the benefit of that to be honest with you um not in sort of clear metrics anyway like goals um like assists yeah I think we've seen him develop and improve uh, in terms of his role within the Arsenal team but this was the first real big moment that Kai Havertz has had in an Arsenal shirt and um, and what a time to come up with it eh? in terms of the team news before the game um, a few interesting points obviously Aaron Ramsdale uh, had to play because David Raya was ineligible given that he's still on loan from Brentford officially uh, Leandro Trossard started in midfield which I was a little bit surprised by I thought he'd go with Rice, Jorginho and Odegaard. I think playing away from home, that's probably what I would have done. I would have been that little bit more cautious. But I guess Mikel Arteta felt, and, and he was right, that Arsenal were going to have lots and lots of the ball. And actually having that additional uh, creative force, that additional attack-minded player, might be the way that you break them down. Gabriel Jesus came back into the starting eleven, which again I was a little bit surprised by because... Although he managed to play 90 plus minutes for Brazil the other night, I was very much on on the side of that was a little bit too much. Maybe Brazil were pushing him too hard, but I guess Mikel Arteta thought, well, if he can play 90 for them, then he can play from the start for us. Um, And of course, as I mentioned, Captain Martin Odegaard was back in the side as well. Didn't have a great game, I didn't think, but um, good to see him back nonetheless. And I'm sure he'll play his way uh, back into form. 
in terms of the first half quite a bit of possession um, not really too many chances created with the exception of the disallowed goal uh, that we managed at the end of course of the first half where uh, Jesus's header was beaten up into the air by Mark Flecken and Leandro Trossard again uh, brave at the far post following something up willing to put his body on the line and he managed to head it over the over the line and into the back of the net but of course VAR ruled that he was offside now look I'm not a big fan of, of the way that VAR has been operated at the moment I think we do have a problem with it I do think it needs to improve and I do think that it's impacting not just the game but the fan experience as well you know I, I celebrated the goal and very quickly when I saw the replay in front of me because obviously in the press box you have that um, you know I knew straight away that it was going to be ruled out so you go from literally up here to, to down there in terms of your emotions in a really really short period of time um, I can't have any complaints about the decision I think to the naked eye when you slow it down and you look at the right angle Leandro Trossard did look offside um, and I've always said look, look if we're going to use the lines and we apply them consistently across all the games then that's fine you can't really complain about that that's one of those subjective things uh, sorry objective things I should say um, that you just you just get on with you know you take it on the chin it was a bit of a disappointment but it did I think galvanize us in some way and I thought that going out in the second half uh, you know we'd, we'd be better and we were better at the start of the second half I thought not as good as I'd have liked us to have been still didn't create anywhere near enough chances but there was an urgency or slightly more urgency I would say to Arsenal's play you saw a real urgency I'd say in the last five minutes but you know there was a slight improvement in that second period I guess before I go into the second period in detail, the big talking point from the first half was Aaron Ramsdale. Back in the side, under pressure to perform, particularly after Nick Ramsdale um, had been sort of speaking about the situation that his son finds himself in. And let's be honest, the pressure got to him. You know, the pressure got to him. He um, dilly-dallied on the ball uh, and almost cost us a goal, but for a really good uh, clearance on the line from Declan Rice, and he literally threw a ball straight to a forward player, which, you know, he could do that a thousand times and 999 of them, he gets that right. But he's just got this weight on his shoulders, you feel at the moment, Aaron Ramsdale, and it is a problem. And sort of speaking to people yesterday at the game that also cover the club, that, you know, were working in the media, the general media, that aren't necessarily of an Arsenal persuasion, the general consensus seems to be that this is a situation that Mikel Arteta has created, where he thought that it was going to be a positive thing having this competition that it was going to drive these two goalkeepers to increase their level what it's actually done is put increased scrutiny on each and every one of their performances and actually they're wilting under the pressure now with the whole Ramsdale playing out from the back thing the first situation that occurred the one that we were really lucky really fortunate to get away with um, you know there was uh, there was of course you know a there was a part of me that thought, oh my God, Aaron Ramsdale, what are you doing? But at the same time, when I thought about it at half time, you look at David Raya playing out from the back. You look at Aaron Ramsdale playing out from the back. And both of them have had those types of moments. Both of them have been in a situation where they've given a ball away. Both of them have been in a situation where they've then struggled, uh, of course, to kind of regain their focus afterwards. And, and there's obviously a risk um, that, that comes with playing that way. And it just feels like that pressure is is weighing the both of them down so I just think that if you are looking at both goalkeepers watching them both sort of taking their time on the ball um, in an attempt to pick out a pass both getting closed down both looking at times uncomfortable doing that maybe you need to look at the instruction that's being given to them rather than the two goalkeepers as individuals because they're both top quality everybody knows that you know that, that performance that we saw from Aaron Ramsdale yesterday is not reflective of his actual level as a goalkeeper I think we can all agree on that and the same with David Raya you know he's been one of the outstanding goalkeepers in the Premier League for a number of seasons now um, but when he came to Arsenal and, and started to play in that way there were times where he looked uncomfortable there were times where he looked like he was being made and forced to do something that just doesn't come naturally and, and doesn't come um, you know in terms of without that greater risk and and so yeah you know you've got to think about that and you've got to factor that in I'm not saying that you should excuse them for taking stupid risks that go beyond the manager's instruction I'm not saying that you should 
excuse them for making costly errors but you have to think about what the instruction is at times as well and if you're asking them to play it out play it through the lines they also need an option they need someone to make themselves available quickly enough sharply enough so that they can play that ball um, and it doesn't lead to them you know taking their time on it and essentially putting us at risk it's it's one thing to say or, or to look at one of them and say they've got the ball at the feet the option was there but they didn't see it and it's another thing to say well they had the ball at their feet but there wasn't an option which is why they took the time so you've got to look at the root cause of the problem as well again not excusing Aaron Ramsdale not excusing the incidents David Ryers had with the ball at his feet that have almost cost us goals but I think you need to look at the bigger and broader picture here the throw out it's a mistake um, and it's one that's caused I think by him feeling extra nervous and feeling the pressure you know he had the the Brentford crowd on his back you're just the shit David Raya was the chant uh, basically after the first mistake and that never stopped throughout the entire game credit to Aaron Ramsdale though in the second half um, you know he performed far far better taking it on to the second half then um, as I say there was a little bit more urgency at the start of the second period but not enough for me to feel like Arsenal were going to uh, find that breakthrough and 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 sort of take all three points and I have to say although I've learned to trust this team although I've got to the point where I, I never say never and I always you know I'm, I'm intrigued to see what's going to happen right up until the final whistle because you know this team are capable of producing those moments and you know uh, dipping into the the kind of reserves when it comes to mental strength you know I did think yesterday wasn't going to be our day and, and I couldn't help but feel that it was a massive massive opportunity missed Brentford had a couple of moments in the second half as well. Zinchenko uh, made a brilliant clearance off the line after an initial mistake. Um, there was a shot from Mbumo that went wider the near post where I thought actually if he'd have gone across Aaron Ramsdale, he might have caused him some serious problems. Neil Mopai uh, had a good chance as well. Um, so yeah, you know, Brentford had their moments too. But in that last sort of five, six minutes of the game, I think I, I started to feel like Arsenal were just up in it that they were slowly shifting up into a higher gear uh, and in the end Kai Havertz came up trumps at the back post and look when it comes to Kai Havertz Mikel Arteta when he signed him was hoping that he'd do exactly that now I know that sounds like an obvious thing to say because spend 65 million pound on a player of course you hope that he's going to pop up and score you important goals but the point I'm trying to make here is that we talked about this many many times on the podcast the idea for Havertz was to make him that extra midfield player that was able to make those ghost runs into the box and essentially take up the positions that Xhaka did last season only with his forward instincts be more clinical be more composed and hopefully produce more outputs watch that goal back yesterday and when the ball comes to the right hand side Kai Havertz does exactly what Mikel Arteta was hoping he'd be doing on a regular basis ghosts in at the far post and converts and you know I think that's why Arteta enjoyed it so much as well. It put to one side the fact that it was a match-winning goal, the fact that it, you know, relieved some of the pressure on not just the player but on the manager because this £65 million signing in most people's eyes hasn't worked out yet. But I think there was an extra bit of joy there from the boss because that was exactly what I can imagine he's been trying to coach into Kai Havertz. That's exactly what he was expecting him to bring to the table when he arrived at the football club. And there it was. It's taken a longer time than most of us hoped and wanted for it to click. And I'm not saying that he's going to go on and score every week now. But I think that was the first real example that we saw of what Mikel Arteta had in his mind when he decided to replace Granit Xhaka, essentially, with Kai Havertz. When he decided to change the profile of his left-sided eight from someone who was an all-round midfield player to someone who was more so a forward and certainly more uh, forward-thinking. So, yeah, I think that was a, a really, really big moment. That The crowd loved it um, in that corner, the away section. That was one of those moments where I looked up and thought, I wish I was in the away end now. Um, the celebrations were great. Um, and, and Arteta sort of taking Kai Havertz over to the corner after the game to make sure that he got his flowers was great as well. Um, you know, Kai Havertz is a modest kind of guy. You get the impression that when he's the centre of attention, he kind of shies away from it. He's got his head down. He's not really one for lapping it up, but make no mistake you know behind the scenes you know under the the sort of the language style and, and the relaxed style of Kai Havertz he'd be feeling great about that and and hopefully this is the moment 
that he pushes on from. It's not a pity penalty. This was him coming off of the bench and impacting a game when it really, really mattered. Um, I was surprised, actually, because uh, just sort of talking to people around me during the game, one of the things I was saying was, the only way we're going to break this Brentford side down is if we have somebody that can compete in the box. I said to you guys in the preview show that they will constantly force us wide, that they'll do that over and over and over again. And it's why I said Kai Havertz could be an option in that position. Now, obviously, when he came on, uh, he came on after Eddie and Ketty, and I was surprised, actually, given the state of the game, given what we could all see in front of us, that Arteta opted for Eddie uh, over Havertz. Maybe it was because he was fresher, didn't take part, in international duty, of course, Eddie and Ketia. So perhaps that played a part, but I was surprised slightly at that. Um, but it was Kai Havertz in the end uh, that made the difference. And then when you can bring on, you know, the likes of Jorginho and Ben White to just see out the game in the dying embers and make sure that you don't do anything stupid, you know, it, it makes uh, the world of difference, doesn't it? I'll run through uh, some of the individual performances and I'll share with you guys my player ratings before uh, we wrap up. So Aaron Ramsdale. I'm going to give him a five. Um, you know, I thought he was much improved in the second half, but given the way he played in the first, I don't know how I can give him more than that. Uh, Tommy Asu at right back, not very effective in terms of supporting Saka, I didn't think, um, but defensively solid as ever, so I'll give him a six and a half. Saliba, I'll give him a seven. Uh, Gabriel, I'll give him a seven. Zinchenko, I'm going to give a seven and a half because I thought he showed that composure that we all know he has in midfield just calmed things down at times but also I thought it was a really good overall apart from one or two moments a really good defensive display from him and I don't always say that about him I normally am quite critical of the way he defends moving into midfield Declan Rice oh what a player like, I'm just running out of superlatives for the guy strong powerful essentially held the midfield down by himself because he had two softer players shall we say in, in Trossard and Odegaard around him two attack minded players that were never going to plug the holes that maybe Declan Rice wanted and there were times up against Brentford's midfield three where Trossard was trying he was getting his body in the right places but he just didn't have the, the stature the size the strength that was why I was a little bit concerned about that selection before the game but Declan Rice you know just bossed it didn't he so I'm going to give him an eight Odegaard six not really at it for me um, working his way back to fitness and hopefully we see uh, an improvement in him going forward. Leandro Trossard, I'm going to give him a, a, a seven. Um, as I say, I don't think it really worked in terms of defensively with him in midfield, um, but he obviously had an impact. He, he did score a goal that was millimetres offside. He was offside by a toenail, which was really unfortunate. But that kind of just highlighted, didn't it, why Arteta wanted him in the side. The fact that he would make those runs from deep and that he would show that goal scoring instinct that he has Martinelli I'm going to give him a 6 look tired for me not as effective as he normally is Saka the same uh, Jesus I'm going to give him a 7 because he worked incredibly hard but again not very effective um, so those were my player ratings for the starting 11 Kai Havertz I'm going to give him an 8 because he came on and as soon as he came on he started to make things happen do you remember that the first sort of touch he had on around about the edge of the box and he sort of bundled his way through and then put a low cross in that was blocked but from that moment you knew that things had changed the dynamic of the game had slightly adjusted because of Kai Havertz's introduction so he deserves plenty of credit so those are my player ratings um, if you've got any questions uh, please do leave them in the comments section below and I'll pick them up on tomorrow's pod when I am back in London back in the UK uh, and have a bit more time uh, to be able to kind of really deep dive into some of those. We'll also bring you, of course, the debrief, uh, which I'm looking forward to uh, this uh, week because there's plenty to unpack from not just the Premier League, but from European football as well. Uh, so looking forward to that very, very much. Um, final kind of point would be, you know, we're not playing amazingly. You know, it's always a bit hit and miss after an international break. You don't really know what you're going to get from certain players. You don't know where people's fitness levels are at until you get them back at London Colney. And that's why I was wary about this game. I'm always wary about Arsenal games after an international break. But what I will say is that we continue to persevere. We continue to show that spirit, that fight, that never say die attitude. And whatever people say about the level of our performances so far in comparison to last season, we are top of the league. What more can you really ask from Mikel Arteta? People have criticised what he's done with the goalkeepers. People have criticised the signing of Kai Havertz. People have criticised 
you know, the decisions to persist with certain players. But at the end of the day, if I were Mikel Arteta, I'd turn around and say, we are top of the league. And that, you know, you, you can't say that that's not a big deal because of how early it is in the season. Yeah, of course, you know, you've got to take it with context and understand that a lot can change and a lot can still happen as we learned the hard way last season. But to be top of the league, to be balancing a Premier League campaign, a Champions League campaign, um, you know, I think to be where we are, winning games when we're not playing particularly well, it should be a sign of encouragement um, rather than, than anything else. So, um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you. Uh, so much for joining make sure uh, you leave a like uh, subscribe all the rest of it leave a review for listening on audio and i'll catch you all soon goodbye